Hey, Reggie, thank you for joining me today. Hey, Jim, I appreciate the opportunity to join you. Hey, I'm looking forward to have a conversation with you uh, regarding ultra high pressure water blasting or UHP. You know, for the viewers who are watching this uh, video right now, could you kind of give the basics of what UHP really is? So in, in UHP water blasting, uh, specifically surface preparations and coating removal, um, there's, there, there's, it's a really a misunderstood, underutilized technique in the industry. Um, and, and the reason for that is uh, because, you know, our industry uh, for hundreds of years has used abrasive materials uh, for coatings removal. Um, and then when you take a look at it and you think water, you think carbon steel or you think steel surfaces, those two typically shouldn't mix together. Right. So 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 as an industry. Right. Um, you know, we, we need to do a better job of educating uh, and, and, and teaching um, the, the, the older generation in the business, as well as the newer generation, this technique, because there's so many benefits and such a big value when it comes to uh, personnel and exposures uh, from a safety perspective, mm -hmm. but also the cleanliness of the surface uh, and, and the way water cleans a surface in, in the surface that it gives you. Yeah, and we should draw a distinction because you have you have cleaning and then you have coatings removal. And with the coatings removal, you're removing uh, something that was already existing there. In other words, initially when that uh, structure or that asset was um, was painted, a profile was created with abrasive blasting. And what you're doing with water, uh, ultra high water pressure is you're uncovering uh, that old uh, blast profile that's there. Is that correct? That is correct. So what you'll have in, in coatings removal with ultra high pressure water, um, water by itself is not going to give you a profile, right? So, but what it is going to do is get a, give you a much cleaner, ultra clean surface and remove the impurities in which are on that steel, but also the embedment that was, that was um, in, there as that surface was abrasive blasted, right? So what you have is water impacting the surface and it impacts the surface and cleans from the bottom up. However, abrasive blasting, when it impacts the surface, it cleans from the top down. And that's where you get your embedment from. So when you take a look under a microscope, and there's testing out there that, that shows a structure and or um, a, a piece of plate that was blasted originally with abrasive blasted and coated, and then, that, and then removed with abrasive. And then you take that same plate that was blasted, coated, and removed with water, and you look under a microscope, you actually see what we would call enhancing of the profile on this on the piece of plate that was removed with water because of the effects of removing the embedment and those things. Um, so yes, water by itself will not give you a profile, but from a maintenance standpoint, from an initially instated profile, water is a great option. Uh, but also you are able to put a profile on the surface with water as long as you're just using shotgunning or, or, or what we call in the industry hand lancing, um, you can inject abrasive into that water and you can put a profile. Uh, robotically, uh, there's no technology out there today for that, uh, but you can do it by hand. Yeah, there's uh, so many ways to really look at. And with the use of water, you know, you're using water that's going to be obviously from a clean source. There's a lot of additives that can be put in to hold uh, rust. Uh, so that you don't have any issues with that. And a lot of specifications are really calling for water, uh, high, ultra high pressure water um, use for preparation because of uh, dust suppression and other uh, types of requirements uh, regarding environmental or sometimes even safety. But, you know, in the safety aspect, you know, we're, we're talking about some pretty extreme um, PSIs, you know, anything from, um, I believe, what, 25,000 PSI up to 62,000 PSI. Is that correct? Well, what you'll see is, you know, um, from a from a hand jetting perspective, up to forty, right? Um, you you can get over that. Uh, the robotics are run with pumps up to fifty five thousand psi, um, and you can also use that in hand lancing as well. Um, yes, and when you mentioned from a safety perspective, however, when when we think of shotgunning or hand lancing, we think of uh, cleaning because that's where, you know, mostly, mostly you see water. However, in cleaning, you see lower pressure of pump, 
up to usually 40K, but a, a large volume of water. And that's where it becomes really, uh, for the most part, unsafe because of how much water. That's where your your pressure or your, on the on the gun operator comes from, right? Uh, in surface preparation, you use higher uh, psi on the pump, lower volume of water. So in a a fifty five k pump, the max in our pumps or mostly in this industry, which you'll see is the max gallons per minute is going to be six. And you're splitting that through multiple um, employees shotgunning, right? Rather than one employee at 25, 30,000 PSI and eight to 10 gallons a minute. That's where your thrust comes from. So let's move on to talking about some of the advantages of ultra high pressure uh, water blasting. And, you know, we talked about earlier uh, about using, you know, you're using pure water, and it, um, if I, based on my research, what I found is it seems to be a, a lower cost than abrasive blasting. Um, is that uh, is that correct in my assessment? So, when when you take a look, uh, in, in the value is we we um, and, and the folks doing the work that we do in this industry, uh, we're able to take any type of water source. So. We don't need the facilities to give us clean water because we can clean the water up uh, and through, put it through a process to clean it up. There's, there's, that works twofold, right? So um, cleaner water obviously um, helps the production of your equipment, less downtime, less parts usage, but also, of course, we're bringing ultra clean water to the surface when we're cleaning it, right? Uh, so that's, that's A. Uh, but when you take a look at it from a cost standpoint in comparison to grit, and or garnet or any many type or any type of grit, um, there are some advantages uh, from a disposal standpoint, right? So we have to look at the whole picture, not just the general cost of removing it with grit and water, but the overall cost of removing it with grit and water, because you also have disposals, you've got handling, you've got cleanup and those things. So when we do this, we take a look at the whole picture and we, we, we compare what it would take to grit blast and what it would take to blast with water. And then, you know, the decisions then on the customer, uh, what they want to do. We'll never get to a point where grit is not going to be an option because there's some limitations to water. Grit's always going to be there. Uh, but there are opportunities for water to be cheaper. Yeah, they can work, uh, work in uh, collaboration with each other. Uh, so it does it does provide a lot of um, opportunity there. And another advantage uh, is a smaller footprint because with equipment, you're not going to have really all of the, um, you know, blast pot with abrasives, the recycling and everything like that. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the smaller footprint uh, when you use UHP? Yeah, you know, the footprint, depending on what you're doing, right? So from a robotic standpoint and or the hand lance and shotgun um, compared to abrasive blasting, you know, a lot of people are still doing it old school on the grit side. They're still going to shovel out grit and those things. So their footprint will be a little bit smaller uh, because they're not going to bring a vacuum in to vacuum out the the, the, the uh, grit. However, more and more customers, because of safety, are requiring that their contractors go in there with vacuums and vacuum it out. Uh, but from, from an overall standpoint, I'll say this. Uh, in most cases, yes, the footprint could be smaller with water, but it's it's pretty close depending on what all pieces and parts would be used for the project and how large the project is. Uh, very good. Uh, additionally, too, you can have uh, a reduced or overall project time where you're able to uh, move through a project quickly. Uh, and then another final benefit really is uh, a very clean surface. You know, when you're really looking at uh, water jetting all the way through doing ultra high pressure uh, to remove uh, existing coatings, um, you can have a very clean surface to be able to put on that new coating system. Well, you know, probably uh, that's the second bit largest benefit to utilizing water, right? A, uh, we believe it's safer, right? Because you're limiting exposure, um, you know, because it takes the place of so many blasters due to timelines and those things. Uh, but a very close second is the ability to move projects along and simultaneously work with other trades within the area, right? You know yourself, abrasive blasting, it gets dusty, uh, right? You need, you need to have containment. 
then you know projects are completed. Then they find out that they ha they, they they find grit in uh, duct work. They find grit in the pumps. Those things. So you don't have that with water. Uh, so you continue to move and you continue to operate. You have folks in other crafts working just beside you while you're blasting with the water. So that, that's a large and a huge benefit for our customers because we're able to get in there and work with others and get projects finished and on time for them. Yeah, and I think on the other aspect you were talking about with the braces, uh, you're going to have, if, if you have a situation where you're doing coatings removal, you have a braces in play, uh, they're getting everywhere. And if you're looking to have some type of containment, um, you know, with ultra high pressure water, can give you the ability in, in, in some cases maybe to have a little bit more uh, eco-friendly uh, footprint when you're um, uh, operation, when you're performing uh, the uh, cleaning and or um, uh, the surface preparation. That is correct. Yeah. Uh, related to safety, what type of safety is required when you're operating in high pressures like this? So from a shotgunning and or hand lancing standpoint, uh, there, there's, there's many different requirements from different customers, right? So uh, a standard PPE would be a metatarsal on your shins and your, your, your feet, right? The guns are long enough so that you can't turn it on yourself. Uh, it's a multi-trigger system, right? So both triggers have to be uh, engaged in order for this gun to, to, to maneuver and work correctly. Um, but other than that, it would be standard PPE. However, they are, there are um, some blasting suits out there that are cut proof, um, TST suits, things of that nature, that uh, turtle suits uh, that some folks wear. They are, some are a little bit bulky, uh, but for the most part, you know, once a customer embraces the shotgunning and hand lancing um, and they find a system that they feel comfortable with and works, uh, there's multiple things out there that you can do. From a robotics standpoint, when you're removing coatings with robotics, uh, you know, it'll be 100% contained. Uh, it's, it's being vacuumed at the same time that it's being removed. It's dry behind the robot. You're able to coat behind the robot. So we talk about moving projects along from a robotic standpoint. Uh, and in that, that's just standard PPE, right? So you're not, you're not wearing any PPE other than standard there. Well, Reggie, I really appreciate the opportunity to have a conversation with you. You know, how can people get in contact with you? So I'm pretty easy to reach. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, obviously, like most of us in the professional world today. Uh, also uh, by email at Reggie, R-E-G-G-I-E dot R at goallstream.com. Uh, and you can reach me on my cell. I don't mind giving my cell out on, on here. 225-828-8152. Uh, um, we've got a great team here, very knowledgeable team um, that, uh, that believes in, in, in water and, and, you know, loves to preach about water. And, and we, we, we're taking it upon ourselves to help educate the industry uh, and, and the value and the benefits of water. Oh, Reggie, I appreciate, uh, again, this opportunity to talk about ultra-high pressure water for cleaning and also surface preparation. Have a great day. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you. I appreciate you watching this clip from the latest release of Coatings Talk. Please consider joining my YouTube channel by using the link posted in the comments below. Have a great day.